Hi, my name is Jack. I was saved out of a past of abuse, addiction, the new age, the occult, and eventually practicing ritual magic in a Freemason lodge. And this is... My name is Josh, and I am Jack's husband. And I was saved at an early age. I grew up in the church, and I'm grateful that God saved me. Amen. And today is so fun, and it's it's exciting for me. And also nerve-wracking because I'm hoping everything's recording well because this isn't like, this is actually a surprise. You don't know what I'm going to say. You don't know what's going on. I mean, he knows. So basically I said, I want to do a video where I share life hacks that my husband has that he doesn't know that he has that I wish that I had. (laughs) And basically just ask you why. You know what I mean? Like why? Yeah. So. I'm ready. Okay. Okay. So, but you can't cheat. I'm not that you ever cheat. He, anyway, I'm very competitive. He's not at all. So, all that to say, how would I cheat? Don't so, look at the so question. I know how to. Okay, <laughs> yeah. how not to cheat? Got it. <laughs> Let's see. Don't. I probably shouldn't have even written them down. <laughs> okay. Let me know. Hmm. When you look at them. Life hack number one. My husband. <laughs> <laughs> no idea what's coming. My husband named Josh. Yeah. He, whenever we're together, he never scrolls on social media. Why? Why is this? What do you mean together? Just like ever? Well, it's not. So when we're together, like you come home from work, it's not like you're taking a seat down and scrolling on social media. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Like some people. In this room. (laughs) (laughs) Rama. Why is that? Yeah, why? Mm -hmm. I want to be intentional with you. I actually am not super interested even in social media. Do you even have social media? So I do. I have a Facebook. Allegedly. What's the last time you went on Facebook? I went on Facebook. Mm -hmm. What was that? I posted about... You, to serve me. Right? To your anniversary? Yeah. Yeah. So just a, f- a couple weeks ago. Okay. So I was on actually very recently, a couple true. weeks ago. But you were on why? To post uh, an to your anniversary post. And why? Because I love you, to yeah. serve you. Yeah. He knows it blessed me when he knows <laughs> that. So that was a gift. I'm not the biggest poster. Yeah. So that, that took a lot of dying to self. <laughs> Even though I love you so much. Yeah. So, yeah. But I don't scroll because it's, I, I don't know. It's, I'd rather talk with you and hang out with you and play games or. Board games, you mean? Enjoy, enjoy something together. So. Yeah. That's great. That's not like most people. Um, and I really, that's something that I really want to do. Sorry, I was looking at my shoulder. Um, <laughs> that's something that I really want to that that has been humbling for me, especially since we when we first got married, because I that's how I would unwind is to just be scrolling. And then we got married and then you are never doing that. So it makes it a lot it makes me a lot more aware when I'm doing it because you're not. <laughs> so yeah, Makes it's sense. a problem. And so why don't you like have an Instagram for example or have or use social media? Well when I used to have an Instagram this was well pre business, mm-hmm. but when I had like a personal one for myself, it was pretty vain mm-hmm. and there was a lot of pride behind it. And I would post things that were inappropriate of myself, uh, namely fitness related things, things without a shirt, things like that, things Ooh. that were inappropriate. And I've since deleted my Instagram after being convicted by the Lord that. It wasn't honoring him and and more specifically my heart in posting. There were even some things that were benign, for lack of a better term, that that weren't necessarily unholy, but the reason for posting it was pride. Mm. And so even from that all the way to pride-driven, vain, inappropriate things, like Mm. the whole spectrum. So at at best, (laughs) maybe this isn't the best way to phrase it, but at best, it was my heart was was 
boastfully posting something not inappropriate. And at worst, it was boastfully posting something inappropriate. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. And I appreciate you so much because whenever I'm like, do I do this? Do I not do this? You bring it back to the heart. Um, and that's just so helpful. Remembering like, am I loving God from my heart with this? Or am I, you know, just having a heart check? So yeah. I really appreciate that. And it's and that's a life hack that I I want to have and that you encourage me to do just by the way that you limp. All right. Number two. Back. Okay. There are actually six, but I'm concerned that um that it'll go too long. So we'll see. We might get to all six, but we might just do five, depending on is, okay. is my shirt okay? The shirt is very like so you're just never sure what it's doing. Okay. Number two. Oh, do you know what it is? Do you have any guesses? You don't know. That I cut out dairy. <laughs> okay. Number two. Life hack that my husband has that I that I want to have. My husband named Joshua, he's right here. He starts his day in prayer. <laughs> yeah, and meditating the word. I don't start the day though in prayer. I have like, I, yeah. But you get up and you spend a, and by God's grace, you spend a solid amount of time in prayer. Why do you do? Why do? I need to it's yeah it's it's necessary for life and for my spiritual life uh, i know that if i start my day in in anything else but gratitude and mm-hmm. humility before the lord then i'm susceptible to my flesh driving my day which happens quite often even sometimes after prayer my in my weakness and in my flesh i will act out of my my weak flesh so it's necessary that's why i do it and it's become a a habit now i have my little spot on our front room couch and rima comes up and hangs out with me our cat and yeah it's a good time well i'm really encouraged by it because um it's just been so encouraging to see god grow that area of your life since we got married and you and your diligence to do it habitually every morning i know when you get up you'll be in the word <laughs> you'll be in prayer and then you'll be in the word in, in actually every morning in that order or um like if i sleep longer than you i know oh he's been gone for like 10 minutes he's probably still in like in prayer like it's just very um steady and habitual and diligent and i i it's such a good example for me to see every morning so that's the second life hack, and well, I'll save that for maybe another video, but there's another one attached to that that I really appreciate as well. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. It's all by God's grace yeah. primarily, but secondarily, God used you too. You watching your prayer life too and the consistency in it. I've always, well, I used to always tell you, I want to be more prayerful. Are you going to cry? You're, uh, you're looking through your own tearful eyes. <laughs> And it looks like I'm crying. I think that's what's happening. I, yeah, so, so thank you. Praise God for using you. Yeah, I love you. I love you too. Very much. Very much. That was number two. All right. I'm not looking. Thank you. Number three. Three. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. I'll do it all in good ones. Okay. A life hack that you have that I wish that I had. I don't like wishing, but that I would like to attain to is you believe the best about others every time or as your knee jerk reaction, your go to first response is to believe the best. So huh. why? Praise the Lord. I. It's a good question. That's clear. It's definitely a work of God, clearly a work of the Lord. I wouldn't say that I never or I always think the best initially, but I think I'm quick to for sure. If not, if it's not my knee jerk reaction, I'm quick to pivot. And yeah, I think, well, I think it's, yeah, it's an understanding of 
that that God by His grace has given me of love, as described in First Corinthians thirteen, and um, understanding that love it bears all things, it hopes all things, believes all things, and I think, yeah, when there's especially when there's a situation where I feel wronged or or I sense that you feel wronged yeah. in a situation. Uh, obviously, I want to shepherd you, so I'm thinking of you first, and even in those moments. But also, when I think of others, I'm always, I don't know where it came from, but always thinking, well, what, what's the reason for that? And ultimately, it comes, not ultimately, but a lot of times it comes down to, well, it could be sin, right? And it could be uh, that that area of their life has is being sanctified. So we're we're seeing the fruit of that, and yeah. so I think it's just thinking of all the different possibilities and then because of that as a result of that being able to extend grace yeah that's so good and i've noticed in a practical way that that is lived out is that when i come to you like oh this is so hard and or this person did this like by god's grace try not to gossip but just share something i'm going through your for your knee jerk is to say well uh maybe this or believe the best about the person which is so helpful because a lot of the time in my flesh when something upsetting happens i'm not thinking like oh right they're going through this thing or oh maybe they're this or maybe they don't uh, just yeah so it's been very encouraging to have you like that is your first response is to believe the best um and to show grace and really appreciate that i'm glad praise god praise god Number four. Is there anything else you want to <laughs> say on that? I, I was gonna say I, I don't I don't like gossiping. Yeah. I really do pray that it that I'm not just actually gossiping and blind to it. I don't think I do. Um, but I I don't enjoy it. Just feels and slandering and maligning yeah. and gossip in general just doesn't feel right. Yeah. And, and well, it's same. conviction, right? <laughs> so. When I say it doesn't feel right, right, it's it's the Holy Spirit convicting me that it's sin and not engaging in it. Right. So that's one area, perhaps one area of my life that is just by His grace further along in its sanctification than yeah. many other areas of my life. Well, so I would say I like that's another way that God uses you in my life is that in that area, like that's just not, I can't even think of a time that you've gossiped. Um, like I'm sure that you have because you're a human, but that's just not something that you do. And so it really would stand out and does stand out if I ever do it, because that's just not, that's not our relationship because that's not how you're leading it. Um, and so that's made an impact on my life because there are a lot of ways that I didn't think of something as gossip, Mm -hmm. but in my heart, I began to be convicted that, oh, I actually, I don't need to share that. Um, even if. Yeah, so I appreciate you setting that standard as the husband of our household. Yeah. Thanks, babe. Yeah. Mm. Number four is great, too. Mm. I, I felt like I had to add a caveat, but so a life hack that you have that is so lovely is, it really is lovely, though, is, <laughs> okay, is it not actually? No, it really is. Oh. It just felt like I said that weird. <laughs> like the fact that you have that is so lovely is that when you come home from work or just in general, even on the weekends, if we're together, generally speaking, you will put your phone on do not disturb. Why? Yeah, I like to have it on do not disturb as often as possible because... Well, one, work. Right. Get a lot of work calls or messages or emails. So they work, they understand too that I unplug when I leave the office. So they generally respect that, which is great. But obviously there's a lot. Right. So there's that. There's, I think, an understanding of how distracting a phone can be. So, and referring back to our previous was it i guess it was life hack number one the social media part of it i just i I feel like that's the only 
the only reason to be that I would be on my phone. And so mm. I'm not on social media. And don't get me wrong, uh, a nice YouTube video yeah. from time to time. Like I'll watch sports highlights from time to time. There are certain types of videos. Ryan Trayton. Mm. Ryan. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shout out, Ryan. And I don't know, like fun, like, so I love, you know, I love the soldier returning home videos. Yes. I love uh, surprise, adoption. adoption videos. <laughs> I love animal videos. So, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll enjoy a nice video from time to time, but <laughs> I, <laughs> just generally speaking, my phone is to me reserved for use it at work. It will be a fun source of videos from time to time, texting for sure like friends and or family. But outside of that, there really isn't much that I need my phone for. So Right. And something like the reason why I felt like I'd have to put a caveat just sadly in this this day and age and in this world and um but I understand it because I used to be in that world and have experienced that is that some people see that as um they would see that and, and immediately think like, oh, you're hiding something or, oh, you're protecting your phone. But another, like I'll, I'll add a little cousin. No, not a cousin. Like a little, like I'm adding on to it. Like I'm putting a little backpack of another weight <laughs> onto it. <laughs> Is that um, you, you're like, your phone is my phone. Eh. There's never any... Um, I don't know the word. Nothing to hide. Yeah. And you will sometimes, if you need a photo or something, or or just want to, just want to look. Or yeah. like, I just leave my phone wherever, and I don't care if you look at it or not. Yeah, and it's cool because Josh has just been so gracious. Because coming from a past, having been cheated on many times before I was saved, I was the cheater many times. Um, I'm just especially in a specific relationship, being so mistreated and manipulated there have been a couple times that have been like can i just like look at your phone and what's been hard for you that by god's grace he's shown you has nothing to do with you is at first it's like josh has done literally nothing wrong um i mean i'm sure you've done things wrong in our two years of marriage but for sure he's never done anything to make me doubt his loyalty like you've just continued and continued and continued to garner trust and show me your loyalty so it's, I think it can be hard when it's not a reflection of you, it's a reflection of memories or just old sure. fears coming up that the enemy is using. Um, but it's just been really redemptive to have you be so honest and open. And again, like I have nothing to hide, whatever. I'm not used to that. So um, I really appreciate your, you both turning off like your phone when, when you're with me or when we're together and um and also being so open sure yeah absolutely big i think the i'm really encouraged by that by the way because i don't know if i'd realize that fully mm. that it it isn't because i've done something yeah and in you know insecurity is something that has that i've struggled with and so the first thought and maybe that comes hand in hand with was it life hack number three <laughs> that I thinking the best of others, I think I'm quick to think of the worst in myself, mm. which can be, a, yeah, it's, it's not a, it's not a godly thing to do. Like thinking of ourselves rightly, thinking of ourselves biblically and fully understanding the grace that extends to us in Christ is, is of utmost importance. And so with that being said, it's actually, it's super encouraging. I really appreciate you sharing that it is, more so a byproduct of what you've been through, which is serious and what you've been through. And so it that's helpful just yeah. in general. So thank you. It's entirely it. a byproduct. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and, and I always think like the, I, I, if I had gone through what you've gone through, mm. I'd struggle to trust too, but I just don't understand it Yeah, because I'm so quick to, trust right and maybe to my detriment but and this is your first so relationship so yeah, yeah. So. i'm so blessed um okay number five okay i know what the sixth one is though okay okay do you want to ask that one first just in case you forget 
No, no. I think I'll remember. <laughs> Actually, that... Because yeah. you have five rings. What is the sixth one? <laughs> Hold on. Um, Are you thinking of number six? Yeah. I thought I remembered it. Um, it's on my... It's on my phone. This is why I recommend you start with six. <laughs> I thought I... Thought I um, let me just do this because I don't remember right now. Sure. Number five. Um, so something that we've talked about this recently, so this won't be a huge surprise for you, but something that you do that I really, that's a life hack that I really appreciate that's really encouraging. Oh, I remember number six. That's really encouraging for me. You want to start with six? No, no, I'm good. I'm good. I got it. Sure. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Um, is that... Oh, is that you set healthy but firm boundaries with members of the opposite sex, but not just physical boundaries, but emotional boundaries. Mm -hmm. Why? <laughs> well, one, to honor God by honoring you mm -hmm. and honoring also honoring a woman's perhaps current husband, or your future husband, whether they're dating or not. If it's a single woman, I want to be able to say to that current husband or future husband, I want to be able to tell that man that I was, that I sought to honor him and to honor her and to respect, respect her and him all in, you know, in one act of, of being just careful and I'd rather, especially at work, you're with these people perhaps more hours than you are with your significant other if you take away the sleep, like waking hours. And so you have to be careful, mm -hmm. right? careful where your heart goes, careful with just the, the interaction in general. And it's not to, this isn't to say that I can't, like the people at my workplace or in my life are not trustworthy or they're mm. bad people, not at all, great people. But just also, I would say specifically for me, I am a very social person. I love people and I love interacting with people. But I, and I'd also say the, the with that, the issue is that I, there's also insecurity and there's also, I mean, it one in the same, it's pride and like, a people pleasing yeah. past, if you will. I've I've had a lot of a lot of my life has been spent and relationships spent going above and beyond to please the other person or to seem a certain way. So, mm. so all that to say, uh, even apart from the insecurity and all of that, wanting to honor you, wanting to honor the women in my life and honor their current or future spouses and also on top of that knowing my propensity to people please my propensity to want to be the center of attention or be viewed highly whatever the case may be god has done a, a great work in my life to really tone that down and to replace that with a slowness to speak um, a quickness to listen and almost like not wanting to be the center of attention anymore, which is crazy because my old self loved that. So yeah, I'd say those are all the reasons. You mean the old self that almost took out the ref on the basketball court to show how high you could jump? Uh, click on the link below for that video. <laughs> I recently found this old <laughs> external drive and it was very joyful. Yeah. Um, I appreciate yeah. that. And it's very humbling. <laughs> it's very humbling and encouraging for me um to because i can so easily go the other way and being married to you and even though i actually i'm excited to share our dating i mean not our dating our friendship say our, our story because tough tough so much so much of our of our friendship though what like exemplified that i like did not understand um why it was important to have emotional boundaries and I just thought it was totally fine to be best friends with a guy um, and just show my entire heart basically. And and now 
my convictions have changed very much where I love your friends. We just had them over last night. Like they're they're the bros, but I wouldn't I don't love them in the sense of having a deep emotional relationship with them where I I would go to them with a problem or pour out my heart or anything like that just because I respect you and I love you. Ultimately, I love and honor God and I don't want to um I love the thought of well one I just I my I'm called to be married to you. Like God places such a high call on marriage and the oneness of marriage and being unified at one flesh. Like I am called to be your wife. If the Lord wills for us to have kids, I'm called to be their mother. I'm called to be friends to the friends that I have, but I'm not called to be like, what is my relationship to the single men at the church or just kind of thinking through, I have specific callings and I want to honor God in those roles that he has made me. And uh, our conviction is that kind of moving that bar or moving that line further back rather than getting these deep friendships and maybe something gets too emotional or intimate and then you like pull the line back or who knows but we just like to really just outdo one another and showing honor and respect and caring for other people's hearts caring for our hearts and um yeah i love when you say erring on the side of holiness like if we're going to err on one side by god's grace we would prefer to err on the side of holiness um especially taking serious that we're going to give an account before God. But all that to say, I've really seen you grow in that and I've really seen you be an example in that where I look at my life, I'm like, I wish I did that. Hmm. Like you're you're doing it. And it's just so true, that desire for um, approval or attention because it feels good, but instead denying self and honoring God. Totally. And I want to make it clear too, that it's not that I never do it and mm-hmm. never fall into that and that that desire is gone mm-hmm. actually it's on the contrary like I, it's a temptation constantly yeah and i've given in to that temptation for so much of my life to be the center of attention to have people like me so i've spent many years giving into that temptation and even not really being convicted of it so the difference now is it is now a conviction for me personally. Mm, I think good. there's, so just making the distinction that yeah. that it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that it's completely gone, like many struggles and, and sins for for any believer. Mm. It's not that it dis, it's disappeared. It's that I know now I recognize it as a temptation and I, and it's a conviction. So I now am aware of it and now I'm able to bring it to the Lord hmm. and to recognize it as a temptation and we'll call it to flee temptation. So therefore I flee. Yeah. <laughs> and it's encouraging that you lead, that you lead in that, which leads me to the last hmm. one, number six, which I remembered because it was the end of my last sentence, <laughs> <laughs> is that you have this life hack that I wish that I had. I don't wish though because I don't like that word. Mm-hmm. Um, you lead by example. So I can think of that in many areas where instead of being like, you need to do this and I'm lead by telling me what to do. I can think of even in the ways that you served me like around the house, because coming into this, I didn't know what I was doing. And (laughs) in so many ways, I learned by watching you do things like you selflessly serving me by doing the dishes and I don't even say thank you because I don't even really realize that you did them. And then, but you're just like doing it. And then I'm like, wait, I want to do that. That that was really nice. Hmm. And then I start doing it or just little things that I can think of that I was like, wow, I'm so like encouraged by how well you serve me or how well you do this thing. And I want to be like that. So then I start doing it. But you're truly being a servant leader. You're You're leading by example. And so many of the areas of that were in you serving me and me being like, wait, I want to do that. Why? Praise God. <laughs> why? Did I ask why? why? Oh yeah, I did. I asked why. You did. But specifically what? Why what? Why? Why you do? Why do I? Why? 
Why do you lead by example? <laughs> I don't know. Like I said it. Yeah. No, it's okay. <laughs> I just want to know how to answer it. Yeah. Why? Uh, let's see. I, yeah, I guess, well, let me start with this. There are times where I totally fail in my heart because there are times where I'll grumble or there are times where I'll not be, I'll be embittered mm -hmm. doing something. So I, yeah, I, I don't want anyone to think that I am perfect because I'm not nowhere near it because Christ is perfect Amen. and I am nowhere near Christ. I am only in Christ and I have been, my sin has been imputed to Christ, his righteousness imputed to me, but I'm not at all perfect. So all that being said, it's true. I definitely it's true. have moments of sin, moments but, of imperfection, but what? But I love you. Oh, thank you. I love you too. But with all that being said, yeah, I, I think I just enjoy serving. Yeah, I guess it comes from, and it doesn't really feel like I'm doing this begrudgingly most of the time, but really desiring to serve you mm -hmm. and the desire to die to self. And again, that's not a constant. It's not something that um that I've got mastered and never will have mastered, but it, yeah, it really ultimately comes from a heart that God has transformed yeah. from being selfish to selfless, from self-centered to others-centered and more specifically Christ-centered. So I think it really is just a result of a changed heart. Mm -hmm. And if you were to maybe see my life when I was younger. I still love to serve people, but I know for a fact that it was more about bringing myself attention or perhaps a works-based righteousness mindset, mm -hmm. perhaps. But now I can say in this stage of my life, it's a little more about God doing, or a lot more about God doing a work in my heart to make me christ centered and, and others focused so praise god for go. doing that work in you yeah praise god indeed and um i'm encouraged by it you're very pretty <laughs> thank you <laughs> i will ask you one thing though what encouragement okay. would you have to men one well i guess just a general encouragement to men mm -hmm. yeah oh okay that's it that's period it. yeah period oh, question mark. question mark well, this is coming from a man who was single for 30 years of his life and have has been in a relationship for the past four, married for the last two. So Four? Four? What did I say? In a relationship for the last... I mean, oh, technically. Three. No, no, no. I would say four. Yeah. We've been in a... We were in a situation. <laughs> situation. <laughs> we've been. Situation. We've been that's basically funny. together for four years. Yeah. I'll take it. I think okay. that's accurate. Okay. 2020. Well, let me say. No, no. We're coming. Coming from, <laughs> coming from a man. This is coming from a man who's been single for 30 years. 31-ish years. 30 years. 30 years. 30 years. 30 years. And yeah. in a relationship for three and a half. Four <laughs> and then married for two. Yeah. So I, I don't have a ton of experience. This isn't based on all the dating experience I've had. This isn't based on all the marriage experience because I haven't had a lot. So I say I say that to say that my encouragement comes from a man who waited a while, mm -hmm. oftentimes impatiently. So I'd encourage men, single men, I'd encourage you to truly continue to seek the Lord and seek him in all things and in all ways. So of course the main pillars being digging the scriptures, meditating on his word, reading it, getting to know it, understanding it, using resources to understand it better, praying, 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 being devoted to prayer, which I wasn't until more recently and being in fellowship with believers. So 
you do those three things consistently, you do them habitually, and you you ask the Lord to to help you do them joyfully, your life will be significantly different and you will truly find contentment in Christ. Not always, not in every moment, but you will find contentment in Christ. And so that's for the single men, the men who are dating slash engaged, I would encourage you. Do you want me, is this too much? No, no, no. no. For those who are dating and engaged, I would encourage you to continue to seek the Lord in the same ways while also asking the Lord for discernment, asking him for wisdom on how to navigate your relationship and speaking candidly and personally seeking holiness. And that includes setting boundaries of holiness and asking the Lord to continue to sanctify you in that area. And if, if purity is a struggle, then perhaps seeking help from those who've been there, from friends to keep you accountable, from mentors, um, disciplers who can pour into you and, and pour wisdom into you. I wish I had done more of that when we were in a relationship. And for those who are married, I would uh, implore you and encourage you to continue to ask the Lord to reveal to you what you know the scriptures say in how we are to treat our wives um, in you know Ephesians 5 is a great place to go and how our marriage is to look first Peter 3 is a place we go to uh, on how wives and husbands are to treat one another and and to oh yeah Colossians 3 and good call babe and yeah to one to to remind yourself constantly of those truths by reading and meditating upon them and God's word in general, but also in that asking the Lord to reveal areas of your life that don't align with his word mm-hmm. and areas that you struggle with and asking the Lord would continue to convict you of those sins. Because I know that a lot of our, a lot of our issues, at least our past issues of you know disagreement or times that we've been on different pages times that we've perhaps argued or have not been kind to one another. It's been an area that I either have overlooked intentionally or unintentionally, an area of unrepentant sin or an area of knowing the truth, but just knowing it and not necessarily having it in my heart, um, for lack of a better phrase, not truly living it out Mm. because that area hasn't been sanctified in my life. So it's helped to recognize those areas and call it out for what it is, sin. So that would be my encouragement and to continue on. Amen. That was great. Sorry, my eyes getting sore from looking at you for so long. I'm an eyesore. No, (laughs) I had a feeling it was going... Um, thanks, babe. You're welcome. My pleasure. And I would just very, very quickly um, encourage any ladies out there, if you're single, wait on the Lord and trust the Lord to lead you. Everything that Josh said about being in his word, being in prayer, being in fellowship, but trust God. Um, yeah, I know I had trouble letting go of things in my past. And the reality is that God's will was so much better that I never would have, I just didn't see it coming. I, God, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and his ways are higher than our ways. I couldn't have dreamed up, um, what my life is like now, but mainly the best thing that I have is Christ. He is the true gift, the true treasure, salvation, eternal life in him, the peace, the fruit of the spirit. And, um, just for the married ladies out there, just trust the Lord. Uh, follow him, obey him, and seek to first be pleasing to him and to honor him. I love that the Bible talks over and over again about making it our aim to please him, um, trying to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. We want to please the Lord in how we live, and that includes in our most intimate relationship, which is with our spouse. Um, so 
I pray that this was encouraging. I, I just wanted, I thought it'd be fun to bring these up and surprise you with these <laughs> fun things that I've noticed that have been encouraging to me. And so I pray they're encouraging to you and maybe we'll continue doing a series, but we know that Lord willing, we really want to do a video on our, our story. So let's do it. Let's do it. See you then. Shit.